So true. And, you know, I think that courage is knowing that fear may always still be there, but to do what, but, but to do what you feel, what your path, what you feel your path is needs to, to do, even knowing that you're going to, that fear is going to be there and, and working with that anyway. And when you have light guides, when you have a quiet mind and you can, you can access your light team, you know, or your heavenly father and have those conversations that also can help you guide you through the fear. Um, it has changed is, is all of a sudden chat GPT came about a year ago and exploded. And now people have this artificial intelligence conversation and they're afraid of it. <laughs> they're afraid of everybody's afraid of change. I don't think that it's something to be afraid of just like anything. I, there, there are always going to be issues. I think that there, that can be a huge asset and tool if used right um, to, and, and that will be an explosion, but you know, whereas the pandemic had fear, AI has fear, but instead of looking at it in a fearful mindset, I feel that we can look at these things as to how it has changed our world and how we have taken those lessons and information and we can bring it to a more, a higher light level and, and, and work with those tools in a, in, a, in good you know, in lessons. Yeah, I, I agree. Well, it gets back to that love or fear. Um, years ago, uh, I did a deep dive around fear and, um, and was given this phrase, fear is a pesky little parasite that feeds on those so strong. And when I kind of sat back and reread it, I was like, wow, I never thought of it that way. But when you, when it clicks, when you get it and you understand that, that actually fear is being used to control, fear is being used to sell, fear is being used, it's a parasite. And so when you do the deeper dive work, the inner work, you start to become more and more the observer of what's going on in your own life as well as the external. And you can see where fear is being kicked up in all areas of our lives to um, keep us not going within and not choosing love. And, and anything that is like a side, you know, like that keeps us separate. There, I'm going to go back to the Course of Miracles anything that is brought with fear or other mechanisms to keep us separate is not of love. So true. And, you know, I think that courage is knowing that fear may always still be there, but to do what, but to do what you feel, what your path, what you feel your path is needs to, to do, even knowing that you're going to, that fear is going to be there and, and working with that anyway. And when you have light guides, when you have a quiet mind and you can, you can access your light team, you know, or your heavenly father and have those conversations that also can help you guide you through the fear. Um, oh, yeah. You know, breathe is a really good thing to remember. <laughs> you know, you don't need to breathe for a certain count, but I know like when I'm up there, especially with stage fright, you know, like I'm a public speaker, as you know, as well, when you get into stage fright, um, and my dad was an entertainer. So he, he always said, you know, stage fright is good, <laughs> but anything, you know, that you are fearful of talking to your boss about something important to you or, your child or your husband or whomever, you know, realizing that fear is going to be there, do it anyway. That's courage. I, I like what you were saying as far as, uh, I'm going to use your, your term, Heavenly Father, before I go and do a speaking engagement or writing or an interview, I ask for the guidance to release any fear, any anxiety, any trepidation, any interference. 
and allow what you want for the highest and best of, of the listener, of all concerned, to come through. And I think when we know that we have access to that, then the the fear factor, what a great name for a show. Oh, gee. <laughs> I think they use that. Um, uh, the fear factor starts to get turned down. Yeah. If, when you attack it, it's just like, you know, like what comes to mind is Brene Brown. She she has done huge studies on shame and she yes. speaks about shame. Nobody wants to talk about shame. But her point was, is that if you don't talk about shame, you don't know about vulnerability and you don't you can't speak about joy and all of these other things unless you dive into the shame that we all have. And there's so many that's a whole nother rabbit hole. There's so many different things that pop up, little shame gremlins that pop up in all of our life that we don't even imagine are there. The same with fear. I think that, you know, like, you know, one of the things that popped up just now when we're talking about this is the fear of talking to an angry client, for instance. Mm. You know, nobody wants to talk to an angry client. But have you ever noticed when you talk to somebody that's like up in an uproar and just their anger is like in their face, you can see they're all red and you just you say, I want to listen to you. Tell me what's going on. Immediately they calm down because mm -hmm. they want to be heard. People want to yeah. be seen, heard and understood. That's a famous statement. My other favorite statement is people want to be safe, seen and celebrated. You know, like I feel safe here with you. I feel seen here with you and I feel celebrated because you're my friend and I know that you you love me and you celebrate me. And so that's why it's such a joy to be here with you. I was so looking forward to being on this podcast with you. <laughs> I knew we would have some fun. <laughs> so there are a couple questions that we didn't, I mean, a couple, I mean, like a ton that we didn't get to, but I loved the... Uh, the free flow aspect of how these go. Talking about uh, spirituality, uh, do you pray? I was taught from a very young age how to pray. In fact, I remember the Lord's Prayer was on this little porcelain, I don't even remember what image, some sort of doll, like porcelain doll image mm -hmm. that I sat on my counter and I used to quote the Lord's Prayer and I remember, you know, kneeling down by my bed, but you know, I think for me, I don't, I don't pray. I, I have conversations, you know, like I can have a conversation right now, right here and in my head, even while I'm talking to you for a second, you know, with, with my heavenly father and to say, Hey, you know, you, you know, my course in miracles statement for today was something to the effect of um, I, I will still all voices, but God's in me. And that's my message today to remind me of that. So, you know, in my head, just for even a second, I can say, Hey, listen, is this just what I'm about ready to say, really speak to my heart? Cause my heart is God, you know, is my right. heavenly, heavenly father. So I, and I, I was listening to a podcast the other day where, um, a, a rapper was being interviewed and he was asked the same question do you pray? And when, and the reason why I remembered his answer that resonated with me, he said, well, no, I guess I don't because I only have conversations. You know, I only, and, but that's prayer. <laughs> and that's what the podcast, the, the interviewer said to him when he said that, well, that sounds better than that sounds like praying to me, <laughs> you know? And so that's what I would say is, is to quiet your mind and have like, it can be a second. It can be for five minutes that you're having to come. You know, I, I see some of these the unfortunately unfortunate people that are talking to themselves on the street, you know, and you think to yourself, oh, they're crazy. Well, that's probably me. <laughs> <You know? laughs> talking to my heavenly father in my head and not realizing I'm saying it out loud. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I um, I was asked that question many, many, many years ago. And um and I love the question because there are no wrong answers. And, and even when, and when we owned the, uh, the wellness center, we would ask the question, do you meditate? And people would say, um, oh no, I'm sorry. And we would like, there's no, you know, let's, I bet you are meditating because are you walking quietly, you know, down the road without any kind of headphone or, 
uh, quiet contemplation or do you have a fur baby that you're just completely present with or you know so people have a a preconceived notion of what meditation is what prayer is and like my life is a prayer so coming from a place of where you are now and however many years you have lived and your journey your spiritual journey and um, having a really great foundation you had said about speaking to people and giving them a, a note of encouragement or some kind of word that would change their lives for the better. And, you know, my son, and he's, um, he's now an adult. And I look at, I, I just recently did a talk for a group of uh, young men in Colorado, uh, a sales team that was just extraordinary. And how completely present they were in this presentation and how they utilized the mind shifting and uh, the techniques immediately. And I think of our young people and what they're learning now that I didn't learn until I was much, much older. But are there any words of wisdom that you'd like to wrap with? Well, one of the things, compliments I'd like to give you is is that you're able to encapsulate a thought that resonates with people that they can, that sticks and then they can repeat it, like cancel clear. <laughs> I mean, you made that like very popular. I keep on seeing that red button, cancel clear, <laughs> in my head whenever I think of you with that. Um so I, I, you know, I, when I say that one minute can affect a life, I don't know that I have any, I, I mean, I have a, a, a ton of little sayings that I have in my own head, but what I mean by that is I remember quite a few times where strangers, you know, like I, I'd be sitting on a plane for instance, and as a young adult and a woman, I can't remember her name. I'll never, you know, of course she was in and out of my life, but I'll never forget what she said to me about truth and honesty. And, and, you know, she gave me a compliment at the, at the time to say, you look in people's eyes when you listen to them. And that says to me that you are very um, truthful and honest. Mm -hmm. And that's an important quality. Now that's somebody that I sat with for an hour maybe. And I took away that from her. I remember a, a gentleman in the middle of New York city, walking up to me, give me a compliment and walking away. You know, somebody else that I met just briefly who found out that I loved clowns <gasps> and had my card. I didn't have his, he sent me a clown <gasps> that he saw that was a really cool, like clown gift. And I still have it. He knew that I didn't have his, his, his name and number. And that, and he never contacted me again. And, and it, so it wasn't a come on. And right. then I've had people, for instance, I remember when we opened Caesar's Magical Empire, we were doing training for hundreds of people at a time. And I was part of the training. And I went up on stage and I was very young at the time, but I was, I was a director at a very young age. You know, for whatever reason, I just was, you know, in those positions at a very young age. Some of that's a good thing and some of that's not a good thing. Um, so I think maybe because of my title and that I was young and I was standing up there, it, it must have resonated with at least this one person whom 15 years later, I didn't know who she was because she was in sit, seated in a, in a, a theater style general session type training, one of hundreds of people. And she said, I want you to know that you changed my life in that training. It was very, I loved hearing that. I mean, just that I had that effect. It is also a responsibility to remember because, I mean, not that we're, we're never going to be perfect, but always to be aware of what your words are going to do to someone else mm. and how it's going to affect them because you can either give white magic with a word, just one word, or you can give black magic. And, you know, that black magic could be as simple as that, you know, w why would you pick a color like that that you're wearing? You know, it could be as simple as that. 
you know, instead of saying it that way, you could say, you know, I really like that blue that you wore the other day. Mm-hmm. You know, just yes, understanding how your words can be weapons and how they affect everybody. And just thinking about that in an empathetic way, feel that people in our world, if, the, if we were all in that mindset of really being present in the moment and empathetic, it would change the world if, if that one thing could happen. So that's beautiful. I love that. And it's so true. The the words, the power of words. And I'm seeing more and more of that. You know, you joked about cancel clear, but I'm seeing that, which is basically that message um, about becoming very clear about the words that you are speaking and the words that you are thinking, right? So your thoughts and your words and being mindful about that because you are either nourishing yourself, I'll say it a little different way, nourishing yourself or poisoning yourself and others with your words. And so we must choose wisely. Very important to ourselves. Yeah. You know, you, you hit, I, I love that you mentioned that. It's not just about other people. It's the words you use against yourself. So, yeah. We have to start there because we can't expect anybody else to change. We can't expect the world to change until we go within and change ourselves. Absolutely. So when we find the peace that is our true nature and that unconditional love that is our true nature, then the external will catch up. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's, you know, we only have this one moment and, and then it's gone. You know, it's, it's a series of moments that go by that we we need to concentrate on and, and how we're going to use those moments and being present and mindful is so important with that. I love the work that you do. And the work that you do. So tell us how anybody can get in touch with you if they have uh, a meeting that they need your assistance on. How can we get in touch with you? Thank you. Well, you can reach me uh, at Erica at E-R-I-K-A at Blends, B-L-E-N-D-Z dot events with an S. And my website is Blends Events. Lens.events as well. So www.blendz.events, E V E N T S. And I'll make sure I have that in the description. How, I have to ask you before you go, how did you get that name? What's the, the meaning of that name? You're going to laugh because you know how much I love <laughs> wine, right? <laughs> so there was a winery that I visited in California that had. Blend, B-L-E-N-D-Z was the name of the, and I loved that name so much. And then when I thought about what I do at, in a living, you're blending, it's like blending wine. You're blending the right assets with the right need for the customer. So it's blending all that together and making it all happen. And so and you're a beautiful crystal glass. Yeah. Bring it, bringing it all in. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much honey i appreciate you more than you can ever imagine i love you thank you for your time thank you i love you too god bless, bless. Thank you for watching this three-part podcast with erica welling we covered a lot and i hope you didn't miss a minute of it So please show your love by liking, sharing, and commenting. We appreciate your engagement. See you on the next episode of Sunday Communion Podcast.